Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. This is going to be a short, but I feel very important video. Um, I take this topic uh, very seriously, and uh, if I've learned, I've learned a few things from experience through the years, and uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, looking after people and looking after things. Uh, it's been my lot in life to always be the one that has to look out after people or. Um, keep an eye on things. And this, of course, is not in a military or law enforcement aspect. It's just been um, family and friends and different things through the years. It's always felt to me. I always seem to be the guy that was there to uh, do this stuff. And I've learned a few things um, doing that over the years. I'm no spring chicken anymore. I'm actually quite a bit older than what I look. And uh, you're always going to have to go help somebody or there's going to be some kind of problem. It's going to be at the worst and uh, inopportune time ever. I've never had a problem that happened on a sunny 80 degree day during the day, during the week when you could call somebody and uh, get some things done. It's always been at night. It's been at the weekends. It's been during a storm. It's been during a holiday. It's always been at the absolute worst time ever to get something done. So a lot of my gear and a lot of my tactics that I use to combat this stuff is um, born through experience. And uh, the first thing that I want to mention here, um, which is the main point of this video, is, is your gear, your preps, your things that you have in place, you should always have a mind where that stuff is mobile. You should have, that stuff should all be portable to a certain extent. There's a reason I don't have a whole house generator. I have a portable generator. And, uh, I've had it for years and years and years, and when I decided that I wanted a generator, I decided that I wanted portable. I want to be able to take it with me. If you have a whole house generator, that whole house generator has to stay at the house. But there's been lots of experiences that I've had where I've had to generate electricity at some point other than my home. So then I want something that's portable. And that's really good nowadays with all the portable, you know, solar generators and stuff, even though I don't own any of those. Um, to me, anything that's portable is going to be more valuable than something that's stationary and has to be in a specific spot for it to be used. And uh, like I said, there's been times when I've had to go generate electricity at some place other than my home. So a portable generator run on propane that I can take a few propane tanks with me and I can set up somewhere off site here and I can make electricity for a few hours has been extremely valuable to me. Another thing is, and this might seem super simple, is a lot of times when something has went wrong and I've had to take care of something, it's been at night and it's been in the dark, it's been in dark places and that's why you will constantly see all of my bags, all of my kits, all of my tactical gear, all of my vehicles, every single solitary piece of gear that I carry and keep within arm's reach is all going to have some type of light in it. You can't patch somebody up in the dark. You can't fumble around in your first aid kit. Even if you practice and practice and practice, you need light to be able to facilitate a positive outcome in most situations. There's been times when I've had to crawl up on a roof to fix something to um, um, whatever, to uh, unplug a chimney that some old person had, uh, you know, had too much creosote in in the middle of the night and they were getting smoke backed up in their house. There's been lots of times I've had to do stuff that was borderline dangerous. And if I didn't have a light with me, I couldn't have done it or it would have been even more dangerous for me. So I've had to have a light with me. So experience has taught me that a light is one of the most important things that you can have with you all the time. Another thing, I've seen power outages in big buildings. Big buildings don't have a lot of windows. They have a lot of interior rooms. If the power goes out in a big, large building with no exterior windows, you're going to be in a gigantic black box. So having a light with you in those situations. Hey, you know, I'm going to the city today. I'm going to be going up in this big building for whatever reason have a light with you. Um, another thing that I'm going to touch base on here is defensive gear, defensive equipment. Let's put it that way. 
everybody that has this stuff and practices with this stuff should have a way to transport that to where it's needed. And uh, this is going to revolve um, around some type of case, some type of carrier, some type of container. There's lots of different ways to do this. You know, I'm just going to kind of start you off by explaining a few things. And uh, every situation is going to be different. You know, if you don't have a, a long defensive tool, you don't, of course, you don't need a... Um, a long um, case or protective piece of equipment to keep that in. Um, but you need a way to transport it. And you need a way to transport that piece of gear with its support elements. See if I can put this in a, in a generic enough term here for the old YT. But you need to have some type of case container that holds not only your defensive implement also the stuff that it, you're needed that you need to support that whether it be um, stuff to feed that stuff to maintain it other things uh, like protective equipment that goes along with that defensive implement you need to have that stuff all together that stuff needs to be all in one single solitary place um, another thing is is you need to keep uh I prefer to keep a lot of that stuff low key, and I'm gonna give you, show you one example of that right here, one that I've showed before in one of my travel videos. When I travel, and I travel into areas that I'm unfamiliar with, or I travel to areas that I think that there could be some type of issue, one of the things that I always take with me is some type of soft armor panels, and uh, that can be where concealed. However, sometimes you need to transport that stuff off body, whatever. You're checking into a hotel. I'm going to use that as the example because that's the example I showed in this other video. Something like a simple cheap garment bag like this right here is an easy way to transport that stuff in and out. doesn't raise any suspicion. And you can see there... I have soft armor in that. And uh, I've used this multiple times to transport this in and out of hotels, in and out of areas. You just look like a, a goofy tourist carrying your fancy clothes with you, but it's actually something that can protect you. And uh, that way, if something happens, something transpires, oh, this looks like this might be bad, you can slide that stuff out of there. You can don it, you can put it on, you can put a jacket over top of it. Another thing that I got told by somebody that carries a uh, gun for a limbing is, is in the, you ever notice why I always wear hoodies and stuff? Because a hoodie can, can conceal something like that rather easily. You know, you can uh, grab that, put it on, throw a hoodie over top of it. Now you just look like a, you know, an overweight American, which most of us are. But uh, that is uh, what I mean by staying portable and staying uh, mobile. Another thing is um, medical equipment. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go assist somebody, help somebody that was sick, that was banged up, and uh, well, I have no, <laughs> I have no medical training whatsoever except what the old timers taught me, and uh, that stuff has proved just infinitely valuable over the years. But I've gotten fall calls in snowstorms where somebody that was elderly or somebody that was very, very sick, and they say, hey, we don't know what to do. We can't get a hold of the doctor. Is there anything that you have or is there anything that you can do to help us? And uh, my human nature kicks in. I can't let, I can't turn my head to that. I have to go facilitate some type of positive outcome for that. So then I will grab whatever I think is needed for that situation from the information that I gather and go drop this person off some either some... Uh, Give you an example, somebody that's, uh, you know, throwing up and has been throwing up for uh, a couple of days already that's actually very dehydrated. I got stuff here where, you know, I can get them some uh, Pedialyte or something, drop that stuff off because if they're older, they're sick, they're, they're not going to be able to jump in a car and go somewhere to get that stuff. So then I have some stuff like that here that I can go drop that off and say, here, this will, you know, hopefully get you through so you can talk to somebody that's, uh, you know, some medical professional to get you the help that you need. I think a lot of preppers think that they're some kind of doctors or surgeons. I don't think that. I want to stabilize a person enough so they can get the medical treatment that they need. I hope people understand that that's why a lot of the stuff that I do 
revolves around stabilization. I want to do what I can as just a regular prepared civilian to help that person out so they can get the help that they need. They might just need a little push over the wall. They might need just a little bit something to help them with uh, their symptoms, something to get them uh, feeling just a little bit better that they can help themselves and they can go from there. And I, that is probably the main way that I have handled medical um issues for different people uh, over the years. I want to give them that little push that they need. Goes back to, you know, some, uh, a little piece of advice that I got told by an old timer back in the day, you know, when something's wrong, there's typically always one person that comes along that gives you just enough to get you just a little bit further down the road. I try to be that person. And, uh, and, you know, this is just one of my many first aid kits. So I've got several first aid kits staged for everything from general purpose to illness to injury to burns. So if I got a neighbor that, you know, burned themselves or whatever, I can grab my burn kit and I can go react to that. I can help them out. And that's why I keep all my stuff portable. But I also have larger things. And, uh... Looks like a larger instance or incident, something that's going to take a little bit longer, um, or it might be a longer duration event, or I might have multiple people that I have to help. I've got stuff that's more like this, that is uh, basically just more stuff, again, in a portable, sort of average-looking uh, container. It's just a basic toolbox that I converted And then I have larger uh, containers. If something would happen that if uh, I had to just like beat feet out of here, you know, in a very short period of time, I could uh, I could have a generator, a couple things of uh, fuel on the back end of my pickup truck. I could grab my uh, my defensive equipment. I could grab my medical stuff because everything's separated in totes. I could grab a couple of totes, what I think is necessary for that um, situation. I could throw all that in a vehicle and I can go to wherever I'm needed or uh, wherever the situation um, dictates itself. Because I, wherever I'm at, I want to be a valuable member of that um, area, community. I want to facilitate, like I said, a positive outcome of uh, these bad situations that have a tendency to um, pop up. So keep your preps portable. Keep your preps mobile. Um, even if you don't have uh, the same mindset as me that wants to facilitate a positive outcome, you just want to take care of you and yours, it's still beneficial for you to have um, those preps and those survival things, those defensive items, those medical items, to have them portable. Because what if you want to go from point A to point B? Oh man, I'm here at this location. This location isn't safe anymore. I want to go over to this other location, your bug out that everybody talks about. You probably want to take that stuff with you. So that stuff needs to be portable. It needs to be in some type of portable containers and it needs to be um, easy enough to transport. Of course, you know, if you have back problems, you don't want to load up a tote with 100 pounds worth of stuff. And see, this gets into where every person has to evaluate their own situation and come up with a plan for themselves. This video here is just sort of a springboard to get people thinking about these topics. But anyway, this is Modern Refugee. Hope you guys got a little something to think about out of this video here. It's one of the topics I take very seriously in uh, preparedness and uh, let me think. Let me uh, know what you guys think down in uh, the comments. If you already have your stuff portable, or um, if this uh, gave you some ideas, or some things that you could uh, implement on your uh, own. Anyway, this is Modern Refugee. Appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video here. Just discussing a serious topic today. You guys take care.